Well, um, if you're an academic, you have to raise grant money and it's convenient to have things that actually work, even if they don't work the way you're interested in. Um, so part of it's that, just go with the flow and um, if you can make backprop work well. And back then, in about 2006, 2005, I got fascinated by the idea you could use stacks of restricted bolts machines to pre-train feature detectors and then it would be much easier to get back up to work. It turned out with enough data, which is what you had in speech recognition, um, and later on because of Fei-Fei Li and her team in image recognition, with enough data you don't need the pre-training. Although pre-training is coming back, I mean GPT-3 has pre-training, um, and pre-training is a thoroughly good idea. Um, but once we discovered that you pre-train and that will make backprop work better and that did great things for speech, which George Dahl and Abdul Rahman Mohammed did um, in 2009. Then um, Alex, who was a graduate student in my group then, um, started uh, applying the same ideas to vision. Um, and pretty soon we discovered that you didn't actually need this pre-training, especially if you had the ImageNet data. And in fact, that project um, was partly due to Ilya's persistence. So I remember Ilya coming into the lab one day and saying, look, we, now that we've got speech recognition working and this stuff really works, we've got to do ImageNet before anybody else does. And retrospectively, I learned that Jan LeCun was going into the lab and saying, look, we've got to do ImageNet with ComNets before anybody else does. And Jan's students also, and postdocs said, oh, but I'm busy doing something else. So, oh, well, he, he couldn't actually get someone to commit to it. And Ilya initially couldn't get people to commit to it. And so Ilya persuaded Alex to commit to it by pre-processing the data for him. So he didn't have to pre-process the data. The data was all pre-processed to be just what he needed. And then Alex really went to town and Alex is just a superb programmer. And it was, Alex was able to make a couple of GPUs really sing. He made them work together in his bedroom at home. Um, I didn't think his parents realized that they were paying most of the cost because that was the electricity. Um, but he did a superb job of programming convolutional nets on them. Um, so he just said, we've got to do this and helped Alex with the design and so on. Alex did the really intricate programming and I provided support um, and a few ideas like using Dropout. Um, I also did some good management. I'm not often very good at management, but I'm very proud of the management I did, which is Alex Krzyzewski had to write a depth oral to show that he was sort of capable of understanding research literature, which is what you have to do after a couple of years to stay in the PhD program. And he doesn't really like writing. Um, and he didn't really want to do the depth oral, but it was way past the deadline and the department was hassling us. So I said to him, um, each, each time you can improve the performance by 1% on ImageNet, um, you can delay your depth oral by another week. And Alex delayed his depth oral by a whole lot of weeks. <laughs>